Hey guys, welcome to my Psalm 1 language instruction, emphatic sentence structure 2. So we're just going to be continuing on from the first emphatic sentence structure video, and we're going to be building upon the principles that we learned in that video. So we learned how to put phrases together by using tense marker, action, then the doer, okay? So we're going to be using that principle, and we're going to be adding to it in this video. But before we can do that, we're going to be reviewing some English. You probably didn't think that we were going to be re reviewing English, but... There's things called intransitive and transitive verbs, okay? And basically, I want you to pause the video at this point and read what I have on the slide, okay? So do that, and we're going to be moving on. So read what I have put, and now there's a little bit more reading, and I'm sorry to do this to you, but I want you to read all of this too, and pause the video now. Okay, so I hopefully you did read it. Um, and this will help you, these two pages will help you know the difference between what transitive verbs are and intransitive verbs are. And if you don't know the difference between the two, then you can't uh, really put together correct sentence structures in Psalm 1, okay? So just to kind of highlight some of the key principles that this taught. Um, basically, transitive verbs have an object, that receive an action, okay? So transitive verbs are action verbs that have an object to receive that action. So in this case, the batter hit the ball. Do you remember that? In the first sentence above, so when we, when we said the batter hit the ball, and I have a, a picture right here of the batter hitting the ball, okay, the batter hit the ball. The action in this sentence is hit, okay? Hit. But then there's an object receiving that. The ball is what is being hit. Do you see that? So in transitive verbs, the hit is considered a transitive verb because something is receiving that action, and that is called an object, and the ball is being hit. So the ball is receiving action to it, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. And I'm going to move on to intransitive, okay? So like he says in the first sentence above, the ball received the action of the verb hit. So transitive verbs need objects, or objects receive action, if, if, you, if you want to look at it that way. Transitive verbs, on the other hand, they don't have objects, okay? So for these examples down here, I laughed. There's, there's an action, the laugh, that's a, that's a verb, but there's nothing receiving an action there, okay? The, the I part, that's the person doing the action, but there's no object receiving that action, okay? So, uh, that's, that's one way to look. If there's nothing um, behind the verb, then that's obviously going to be an intransitive verb. But some cases, there's going to be, um, like this sentence, I walked to the park today. Well, we first have to identify our verb, and walked is the verb. Is anything receiving an action? to that. Well, nothing is. Like this is saying right here, this bottom part, the verb must be transitive, right? Wrong. The phrase to the park is a prepositional phrase, and today is an adverb. There is no object, there is no object receiving the action of the verb walked, okay? So, walked, there's nothing receiving an action to that, and so that helps you identify that this is an intransitive verb, okay? So hopefully that little, um, the, those two slides helped, and we're moving on. So the difference, to recap, a transitive verb must receive an action, okay? Must be an action verb, plus there must be an object to receive that action, okay? So I kind of have a little diagram right here, transitive verbs, I need an object, okay? And then intransitive, they don't need an object, okay? So that is the difference, intransitive don't need an object. So transitive need an object, tra intransitive don't, okay? So that's the difference between the two. Something's either uh, being, it, some verb is uh, transferring that action to an object or sometimes that verb is not transferring that action to an object, okay? So hopefully this little explanation helped. Uh, basically, I feel like the, the simplest way to understand it is this little chart, the intransitive and transitive, I need an object or I don't need an object, okay? So is something receiving an action from the verb or is it not, okay? And that's the question you need to ask yourself. Okay, so moving on, we're going to be learning about actual sentence structures. So 
before um, I was talking to you about tense marker action doer, okay? Tense marker action, then the doer. I'm just gonna write that right there. So that is a is something that I created on my own to try to help you build up to putting together entire sentences, okay? So tense marker action doer is something that I created to help you prepare for this lesson, okay? So this, what I've written, tense marker action doer is not a legitimate sentence structure. It's just the beginning of a sentence structure. Um, and But to be honest, if you want to look at the entire or the complete or the real sentence structure, there's a different one for intransitive verbs and there's a different one for transitive verbs. We're going to be talking about intransitive first, and that is the one that has no object receiving an action. Okay, So the actual sentence structure for intransitive verbs, when you use intransitive verbs, are is this tense marker, Pred P, then a noun phrase doer, and then a prepositional phrase. Okay, so I don't want you to worry too much. Uh, I know that you're kind of like saying, "Whoa, tense marker action doer." That that's not that doesn't look anything like that. But let me just kind of break it down for you. Okay, so this pred P that just means predicate phrase, and the, basically the easiest way that I can explain predicate phrases to you is this right here. This pred P that I have, it's either verbs and adverbs, or if you want to think about it another way, it's the action and anything describing the action, okay? So, tense marker action kind of makes sense here, right? So, my tense marker goes first, then my action, or anything describing that action, comes right after that action. So, that's why I told you tense marker action, Okay, so a predicate phrase either is a verb and then an adverb to kind of help identify that verb, or it's an action and anything describing that action, okay? So that is one way to look at it, and I hopefully that way it helped. Then this NP doer, whoops, this noun phrase doer, that is, a noun phrase can be either a doer or a receiver, okay? But in this case, this is going to be the doer, okay? We're not going to be worrying about the receiver in this case just yet because we're talking about intransitive. There's nothing receiving the action. There's, there's nothing receiving that. So the way that I want you to look at it is it's the doer and anything describing that doer, okay? So it's, it's either going to be a noun and just a noun or it's going to be a noun doer and it's going to be anything describing that doer, so like an adjective, okay? So, basically, I still want you to re remember tense marker action doer, but just remember, okay, my tense marker, then my action, and anything describing that action will go after that, which makes sense if you take a look at my basic grammar video, it explains that to you. And then after my action, then I'll do the doer and anything describing that doer, which again, if you watch my basic grammar video, it explains that as well. So, it's still tense marker action doer, but it's just, that's not an actual sentence structure. That's something that I just came up to help simplify this. I, I feel like this is kind of too much for me to memorize. Tense marker, predicate phrase, noun phrase doer, prepositional phrase might be in there. Um, so I just come up with tense marker action doer, and then there might be a prepositional phrase that comes after that. And obviously, if you remember the concepts that I taught you in my basic grammar video, then you'll know that anytime you do have a verb in someone that an adverb will come after it. Usually there's a couple exceptions and if you don't remember those exceptions go back to that video, basic grammar. And then if you have a, a noun, okay, then the adjective will come after it. The adjective will come after my noun. So a doer is considered a noun, okay, and anything that's describing that doer will come after that as, as an, an adjective. And adjectives always follow the noun that they modify or explain or um, change in any way 
in Samoan. In English, a lot of times it'll be before, the adjective will be before the noun, but in Samoan, it always follows the noun, okay? So kind of getting into some example sentences. So like I said before, I still want you to remember tense marker, action, doer, but then there's also gonna be some cases where after the action, it'll have an adverb, and after the doer, it'll have an adjective, okay? All right, so just a couple example sentences here. Uh, you didn't go to the store, you didn't go to the store, okay? So the first thing you need to think, okay, what tense is this? My tense marker will go first, okay? My tense marker will be a past tense marker because you didn't go to the store, that's a past tense that I'm speaking in, okay? So then I will use a saw. My saw will go first, okay? Then I need a predicate phrase, and if we remember, our predicate phrase will be an action and anything describing that action or verbs and adverbs, okay? So let's look at this sentence. What would be the verb? Well, the verb is go, okay? So that'll probably be what goes next, but we're talking about didn't go, okay? So that didn't go, uh, that is an exception. That's an adverb, and that's an exception, so it'll go before the verb, okay? Sa le alu oi, okay? And then my doer will go next, and that is you. And hopefully this is making sense. So my you is my doer, okay? And that goes next. So tense marker action doer is kind of what we've done up to this point, okay? But my lay and my didn't, the thing that I've circled, that's my adverb, and that needs to go, um, and in this case, it'll go before the verb, but usually um, it'll go after the verb, okay? So hopefully this is kind of making sense. So up to this point, we've done the tense marker action doer, and then the next thing that we're throwing on is a prepositional phrase, and we really haven't worked on those yet, but I will work on those more in depth next video, but just so we kind of give you um, some instruction, uh, or a little preview, I guess, to the is the prepositional phrase in this case. And that'll be e lay, okay? To the, and then the location of the preposition uh, is the store, okay? So in this prepositional phrase, we're going to the store, okay? So this is how you put together in transitive sentences. If there's no object, the go, the go here is the, the action, nothing is receiving that go, okay? But then I'm going to the store, okay? All right, so let's move on and let's work on the next sentence, okay? So you went, you went to the store. And I'm gonna highlight that, you went to the store. So what tense am I speaking in? That should be your first question in Psalm 1. What tense am I speaking in? Well, that's past tense, so I'm going to use saw again, and I could also use na, but just for uh, consistency, I'm using saw for now. All right, then the next thing I need to do is my predicate phrase. My predicate phrase is my verbs and my adverbs, or my action and anything describing that action. Well, went, went is that part of, at least part of my predicate phrase, that is the action, okay, well, is there something describing that action? Or is there an adverb? Well, in this case, there isn't. So I'm just going to have alu. Alu will be my predicate phrase in this case. It'll just be the verb. So sometimes in my predicate phrase, I'll have verbs, and sometimes I won't. And in this case, I don't have an adverb. But sometimes I will have adverbs, okay? So in this case, my predicate phrase is, is just alu. And then the next thing I needed to work on is my doer, my noun phrase doer. Okay, so my noun phrase doer is, where is the doer in this case? That is you. Is there any de anything describing you? No, not in this case. So, in this case, tense marker action doer does work. All I have is tense marker action doer. There's nothing describing the action and there's nothing describing the doer, okay? So that's all there is there. Then the rest of the sentence is a prepositional phrase. Okay, so um, we're going to have to the as the prepositional phrase again. So to the is e lay, and then the store again. The store will be the location of where we're going. Okay, awesome. So this we're starting to kind of put together our own phrases. We still need to work on prepositions. I'm going to be doing that next video, but 
don't worry too much. I'm using pretty basic prepositions in these phrases or in these sentences, okay? So, John wrote to a friend. John wrote to a friend. Well, what tense am I speaking in? Well, I'm doing a past tense again. That is going to be saw. And then where's my pre predicate phrase? Where's my predicate phrase? So the first thing I look for is my verb. Well, wrote, wrote is a verb. Is there anything describing that verb? No, there's nothing describing that verb. So uh, I'm going to put that in a box and that's going to be there. And then, whoops. So then the next thing is my doer. I keep covering up the I. My doer is John. John is the doer. Is there any adjective describing John? Nope, there isn't. So tense marker action doer. That's all we need to worry about in this case. And then to a, to a is a preposition. So that is e say. And to is the e. And then the a uh is say, kind of. Okay. So if you remember my determiners that we went, went, worked on, this is kind of the equivalent. And then to a friend is the last part, okay? Awesome. So let's work on our last intransitive sentence um, that I've given you in this little clip. And so that will be the boy works at night, okay? So the boy works at night. What tense am I speaking at? Is that a past tense? Well, it could be, but not really. Is it a present tense? Well, it doesn't really say that he's working right now, does it? Well, so no. Future, he, well, I mean, he could work in the future at night, but John works at night always, or this is a habit of John. So this is going to be a habitual tense, and so that's when we use A. A is our tense, and then the next thing we need to work on is our predicate phrase, so where is the action? The action is works, so works. And that is fainga luenga. Fainga luenga is the word for work, for pay. And then my, so is there anything describing works? No, not in the English sentence. So then the next thing is my noun phrase doer. So that'll be boy. And then that's tama. Okay. I do have a determiner before um, that. And that's because I'm talking about a specific boy. Okay. So that determiner is this the right here, the. And that'll be right there, lay, okay? So I have a, a singular and specific boy that I'm talking about, and so that's why I put a lay before tama, okay? Awesome. So then the next part of the sentence is a prepositional phrase, and that is at, okay? And at is e, lay. And then night is po, okay? Awesome. So we will be... That is all that we have um, in this video. We'll be working on more intransitive sentences in a later clip. Um, but this is uh, the four example sentences that I've given you to kind of help you realize, okay, intransitive sentence structure is basically what we were talking about before. There's just a little difference between the predicate phrase and the noun phrase doer because the predicate phrase, you join the verb and the adverb, and the noun phrase doer, you do the doer and anything describing that doer or an adjective, okay? Awesome, so that is the intransitive side of things. I do encourage you to pause the video and review anything that is not quite clear up to this point. All right, moving on to transitive. We're going to be working on transitive, and transitive verbs, when we use those in Psalm 1, or in English, they have an object that receives an action. So if you look in the, the bottom, I have this little diagram or this picture. Okay, she played. The played is the transitive verb, and the thing that's receiving the object is the piano. The piano is being played on. Okay, so the piano is not the one playing. That is she. This is the doer. Okay. And then the object is right here. The, the, the piano can't play itself. So the doer is she, and the thing that's receiving that action is the piano, and the, the verb is the play or played. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. And this is going to be a little bit, you know, you're going to be like, okay, this is even weirder than the intransitive sentence structure, but just let me break this down for you. So... We still have a tense marker that goes first, okay? 
Then we have the predicate phrase, which I said before, that is just the action and anything describing that action. Then we have an E, okay? We have an E right here. And then we have a noun phrase doer, okay? So basically, I don't want you to worry anything past this point yet. We have the tense marker, which is the same, so I can check that off. Check. Okay, that's going to be the same. Then I have a predicate phrase, which is basically just my verb and anything describing that verb or an adverb. Check. That's the same as in the intransitive. Then the thing that changes is the E. I have an E right here, and then I have a noun phrase doer. Okay, so let me just show you. In Samoan's eyes, there's a noun phrase doer, and then there's a noun phrase done too. There's two different noun phrases that are possible, okay, in transitive sentences. There's a noun phrase of the person doing it, so that in that case, that would be she. She is the noun phrase, and the noun phrase that's doing the action, okay? So in this example, my noun phrase doer is she, okay? Then my done to, my noun phrase done to, a piano is a thing, and, but that is the thing that's receiving the action or that is the object. So you can think of the, the, the done to, the noun phrase done to as the object, okay? So you could also think of the noun phrase doer as the subject, okay? So this could just be another fancy word for subject, okay? Subject. And this could just be another fancy word for object, okay? So, noun phrase doer is a subject, and noun phrase done to is an object. That doesn't really look like a B object, okay? So, hopefully that kind of helps. But just remember that there's two different noun phrases here that are possible when you use transitive sentences or transitive verbs, okay? There's two different noun phrases. There's one doing the action, and there's one receiving the action, Okay, so the way that we mark the doer, this E that I'm talking about, I'm going to unhighlight all of this. This E right here, this marks my doer. So anything that follows my E is the doer. The E is just a marker of the doer in the sentence. So basically, I'm putting an E right here before she, before she. So I'm marking that she is the doer. This E just tells me that she is the doer, okay? So I hopefully that makes sense. So in transitive sentence structures, you'll have a tense marker, predicate phrase, then an E, and then a noun phrase doer, or the subject. And basically that E just marks whoever's doing the action, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. And then what comes after that will be the noun phrase doer, or, or done to. So then what is receiving the action will come after the noun phrase doer. So so just remember that the doer will always have, whoops, the doer will always have an E with it. So the E and then the she, and then the done to will be the object, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So hopefully you realize, okay, tense marker, that same, predicate phrase, that same. Then because I have two different chances of having a noun phrase in, in transitive sentence structure, I have two, two different noun phrases. I have the doer and I have the done to or the subject and the object. I have two different noun phrases possible. Basically, in Samoan, they just want to tell you, okay, the E is going to indicate that it's the doer. So whatever follows that E is the doer. Okay, awesome. So, and then also we can have a prepositional phrase that ends everything off. And yeah, so let's... That, that, and that's possible. That's why I put it in parentheses. It's because that's possible. Just like in my intransitive, this is in parentheses. You don't always have to have a prepositional phrase. Awesome. So, okay, let's go over some example sentences. Uh, I know the answer. Well, what's the verb? The verb is no. Is anything or is there an object in this sentence? Well, the object is answer, Okay. So answer is the object. So let's use our let's use our sentence structure right here. So in in what tense am I speaking in here? So I know the answer. That's going to be like a present tense probably. So that's olo'o. Olo'o is my tense. Right now I know the answer. And then my action, my predicate phrase, uh, that is no. So that'll be Eloa. Let's let's circle that. So Eloa. Okay. 
So is there any adverbs? Is there anything describing or modifying that verb? No, not in this case. So we're going to move on to our E. Our E is going to indicate whoever's doing the action. Well, in this English sentence, I is the doer. I is the doer. So I have an E right here, and then I have an A-O. Whoops. I have an A-O because, man, struggling. Okay, so A-O, that is I and A-O are the equivalents to each other. And in Samoan, the E is indicating the noun phrase doer. So the person doing the action is I am. I am. I am knowing the answer. So in Samoan, they indicate whoever's doing the action with the E. I've said that a million times. I hope that that's burned into your brain by now. Okay. And then the done to, what is receiving the action? Well, we have another noun and or an object. And so the answer is going to be the, the done to, the noun phrase done to. And in this case, there's no prepositional phrase. So I hope that helped walking through that. All right, let's go to this sentence and let's figure out, okay, we read the books or we read the books, okay? It, it, depending on how you said it, depends on the, the tense, okay? We read the books or we read the books. If we said we read the books, that's more of a past tense. But in this case, we're going to do we read the books, okay? And that tense would be a habitual tense. So A, we read the books as a habit, okay? Then what is my predicate phrase? Well, my predicate phrase is my verb, and that's read. Is there any adverbs? No, there's no adverbs. So phi tau is going to be that. And then I'm indicating the doer. Who's doing the, the reading? Well, that's we are. We are reading it. So that's e mato. And then the thing that's receiving the action is the books okay the books awesome all right now let's try you guys working on this on your own for the next two so pause the video at this point and try to do it yourself without looking at the right side all right so if you're correct the teacher will start the class what goes first well will kind of tells me this will right here tells me that that's going to be a future tense so I use the olea right here, okay? Then what is the action in this sentence? Well, start is the action, so I will have amata. And what is receiving? Who's the one starting the class? Well, that will be the teacher, the teacher starting the class. And so I'm going to indicate that right here with the E that the teacher is starting the class, and I have... And E, and then I have a determiner because I'm talking about a singular and a specific teacher starting the class. And then the thing that's receiving the action or the object or the noun phrase done to is the class. And so that'll be at the end. Leva singa. Awesome. So let's, let's work on the last one. She repeated the word. And what tense would that be? Well, that's something that's happened fairly recently probably and it's closer to the present than it is to the past so we're going to use the ua in this case ua and then where's the action well the action is repeat or repeated is there any adverbs in this case no no adverbs so i'm going to circle that and that's going to be toy fi that whole thing is repeat and then who's the one repeating it? Well, that's she, and that's a ia. So I'm indicating with the e who the doer is, and that's ia. And then the word is the thing receiving, and that's upu. Okay? So I hope that this video has helped you in coming up with your own sentences. We still need to work on prepositional phrases, okay? But we will get to that in the next video. What I want you to remember, though, is that what we worked on last video still applies. Tense marker, action, doer. The only difference is, in this case, uh, I have tense marker, then a predicate phrase, which is the action and anything describing that action, or verbs and adverbs. And then in transitive ver uh, verbs or sentences, then I'll use an E, and then I'll have the doer going next, okay? So tense marker, action, doer is still applicable, and it'll still help you remember your sentence structures. 
but you still need to remember the difference between intransitive and transitive verbs. Transitive verbs have two different noun phrases, and so that's why we use the E to mark the doer, okay? We use the E to mark the subject or the person doing the action, and then the other noun phrase doesn't have an E with it, and that'll be the object. That's, that'll be the thing that will be receiving the action, okay? So, and, and, and I just want to clear up one final question. This E right here, this E looks a lot, a lot like a tense marker, and that's because it does look like a tense marker. But just remember, my tense markers go before actions or verbs, okay? So I could have an E right here, just like in this case, I have an E, and then I have another E, okay? This E, the first E, that is telling me, okay, A Phi Tau, I have an action word right there, and so if I have an action word follow, uh, that's following an E, which is, it sounds like an A Phi Tau, if I have an action word or a verb following that E, then that's telling me that it's a habitual tense, okay? But then I have an E, that second E right here, the second E right here, the thing that's following it is a noun phrase or a, a pronoun, okay? And so if I have a pronoun following an E, then that's telling me that, uh, that E is marking the person doing the action, okay? So just remember that. If I have an E and a verb is coming after it, then it, it's acting as a tense marker. If I have an E and it has a pronoun or a noun phrase doer or someone like that, then it's indicating the person doing the action, okay? So hopefully that this video helped. And I want you to go back and review whatever is necessary. And until next time, guys, tofa soy fua.